Hi everybody, Peter of England. Very important video today, probably one of the biggest that I've ever uh, tried to communicate. Um, and it was only brought to my attention two days ago. Um, and so I think we need to look at the implications, uh, the duplicity, the nefarious means that are behind this governmental introduction of a drastic genocidal attack on the nation that is the United Kingdom, but specifically referencing to England and Wales due to the fact that Scottish law is somewhat different than, than uh, the, that for the UK as a whole, as a, separat as a separatist agenda. Now, why this is important is because anyone with any common sense will fully understand or could contemplate that the the devolution um, referendum that was proposed to the Scots some time back uh, was fixed. We know fully well, probably, that the Brexit vote was fixed. We also know the massive overwhelming majority that ushered Boris Johnson into number 10 was fixed. Um, and so what we've got now is a playground of the House of Westminster or the Houses of Parliament there that are bringing in laws to eradicate the social integrity, the community, which is the nation, which is the United Kingdom. Now, why this is important is that there is a bill that is in just being introduced. Well, it was introduced about six or seven months ago, December the 6th, 2023, to be precise, uh, by a chap called Lord Scriven. Um, of all incredulous names. Um, and why I mention that is that there is a, uh, a company called the Worshipful Company of Scriveners, whose um, background professionalism is the writing of legislation for the passing through of Parliament. Now, this particular chap, if you look him up, um, doesn't seem to me, um, he's a Liberal Democrat, one of um, Nick Clegg's sidekicks, uh, he looks to me like one of the types of individuals who doesn't know one end of a, a, a pen from the other. So it's very, very surprising that him in the House of Lords has introduced this bill for what is called the de-establishment of the Church of England. Yes, you heard me right, the disestablishment of the Church of England. And for those of you who are hard of hearing or don't quite understand what that entails there, it means the complete abolition and in effect undoing of the ecclesiastical authority of the church. So this is not about religion today. It doesn't matter whether you go to church or actually whether you believe in God um, per se, but many people do. The, um, the Church of England, uh, or the Anglican Church, as it's also referred to, has 16,000 um, churches or places um, that are, uh, are established in England and Wales for the giving of various, what we might call under, under the Catholic banner, uh, the sacraments, which are, for example, baptism, um, they are for marrying, they are for burial services and death, providing services in prisons, providing services of, of consultation and, um, and solace to people who need that. And so 16,000 places, 16,000 lights within the United Kingdom's territory are going to be switched off if this bill passes. And what I've done is I've put a link down below to um, a, a petition which I'd like as many of you as, as possible to sign so that we can get something moving on this because at this stage it's at its first reading. So the bill is at its first reading, it goes to a second reading, it goes to a review stage, and then finally if it becomes an act of parliament, within six months of it becoming an act, what has to happen is the, the uh, governmental authority who, are, who is appointed has to put into effect the complete closure of the Church of England, all its territories, and everything that is involved in this. Now, why is this so incredible? Why is there no publicity? Why is there no protesting? Why isn't it in the media? 
Why is not Justin Welby, the Archbishop of Canterbury, and his sidekick, Rose Hudson Wilking, who is the, the, the black token feminist that's been brought in with the woke agenda as a virtual signaller by the ex-speaker of the Houses of Parliament uh, in the Commons, a guy, a guy called um, Burko, I think it was John Burko. He brought her in as his personal chaplain. So what we have here now is one of the most important religious offices of the Church of England uh, in Dover. Um, she is the, the Bishop of Dover. And this is where uh, historically um, the, uh, the uh, legate of the Pope received from King John the handing over of England and Ireland for uh, what's called Peter's Pence. So it's got a massive uh, historical um, importance. Now, what we also have to remember is that we're not just potentially losing buildings here. The entire historical and social fabric since the time of Henry VIII um, is, is, is encapsulated in these buildings and in this church. So as, as I was saying, I am not a, 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 a fan of the Church of England. I'm not a fan of the Anglican Church or the Catholic Church. I don't follow an organized religion, but I, knew me, I know many people do. So what the potential is here, if this bill is allowed to become an act, it means it systematically eradicates all potential for attendance at all of these churches that some 12,500 of the 16,000 um, churches or religious buildings within the United Kingdom, they are classed as historical relics. They have a major historical importance. Now, what I fear and what I think is going on here, um, and it has just recently happened in Stoke-on-Trent to a church that I know of, which never did I attend though, it's called St. John's Church in Hanley in Stoke-on-Trent. And what's just been happened, uh, sorry, what's just happened to that is it has been, um, uh, should we say, stood down as a church. I can't remember what the exact phrase is um, for that, uh, or defrocked in a way. And what's happened is it's now become a mosque. So what I think is going to happen here and what is on the agenda of the establishment of the, of the duplicitous Freemasonic collective that is manipulating the territory under your very feet in a, in a genocidal manner, because the definition of genocide is when uh, 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 any outside authority, whether it be military or political, is exercising negative control over a society or groups, religious, social or moral stances, whether it's um, preventing a particular type of worship that was a societal norm, then that comes under the jurisdiction of the 1948 Genocide Act. So that's what I think is going on here. And I think there is a preamble here to these 16,000 places of worship being taken over by, um, should we say, the Muslim community with a potential introduction of Islamic and Sharia law. You think that's too, too grand a, a, a thing to think about, but it's not. So that's what I think. We've got these lords spiritual and lords temporal um, in the, the House of Commons and the House of Lords Justin Welby, who is the Archbishop of Canterbury, has not spoken out against this. He's not, I mean, it's so far beyond belief. Uh, and why I think this is so far beyond belief to be almost unbelievable is the fact that anyone would put a bill like this into, into Parliament uh, whatsoever. Now, what I'll do is I'm just going to um, reiterate some of the things that um, I, I think are of a historical reference here. Um, there's around about 85 million people worldwide that have an allegiance or an attachment to the Church of England. That covers about 165 countries. 
Okay, so obviously in some of these countries that's quite a, a, a minority of people, but nevertheless, the Protestant traditions of the Church of England have a massive significance, but behind the scenes, what you have to remember is that the Protestant religion operates on a Roman Catholic Church footing. They describe themselves as being Episcopalian in nature, but in truth, a lot of what they're operating on uh, is like operating under a franchise here, because all of the regalia, all of the, um, the, uh, the, 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 the uh, should we say, the symbolism of the church has been taken from the Roman Catholic Church. And when Henry VIII uh, established uh, the reform and when he seized all the Catholic churches and lands, um, from that point on, uh, what happened as an, under a collective agreement, then it suddenly became, or stayed as, as, as in a, should we say, a state of, uh, of constant flux. But in effect, the Protestant Church operates under franchise and it has to pay for the rights of wearing the, the various garments that the church and the bishops and the clerics um, um, wear. Now, what I'm going to, to do here now is I'm just going to read from the Church of England website, because this is what's so important to you, um, for you to realize the substance here. It says here on their website, and this is very important, the Church of England, or Anglican Church, is the primary state church in England, where the concepts of church and state are linked. Okay? Now, King Charles, Queen Elizabeth before, her, uh, before him, was the head of the state and head of the church. Okay? This is like putting milk into tea. Once they are aligned with each other, there is no separation. So you can't disestablish one without disestablishing the other. So you have to ask yourself, if the Church of England is being disestablished, what now is happening to the monarchy and the state as we know it? The Church of England is considered the original church of the Anglican community communion, which represents over 85 million people in more than 165 countries. The rub here, while the church upholds many of the customs of Roman Catholicism, it also embraces a fundamental idea adopted during the Protestant Reformation. The Church of England has been viewed as one of the more progressive sects of Christianity, openly allowing for the ordination of women and gay priests. Now, Church of England facts just continuing because this is very important. And don't forget, I want you all to look at the, the link below in the description because that will take you to change.org. And I'd like you to go there and begin the impetus and a tsunami of um, signatures for petitioning Parliament to get this stopped. But we can use other means apart from that because we know at the moment um, there is no parliamentary business. There is what's called an interrogation, I think it's in, or prorogation of Parliament. That means as an election has been called, Parliament has been stand, stood down and no more official business has taken place until after the election, which I think is on uh, July the 4th or July the 6th. Okay, so um, the British monarch is considered the supreme governor of the church and among other privileges, he or she has the authority to approve archbishops, bishops, and other church leaders. The Bible is the principal foundation of the Christian faith. What this is important to note here is that once the Church of England, therefore, is disestablished and closed down, in effect, you have no more official belief in not only God, as is portrayed by the Catholic Church and the Protestant Church, but neither in Christ or Jesus or any of the sacraments that have traditionally and socially been very, very acceptable and comforting for many people. So, if that is acceptable to you, and I would be very surprised if it should be, then so be it. 
But if it isn't, why would the government allow a referendum on the commercial practices of the nation to go forward when we had the, the referendum on the Brexit and whether we should stay within the, the uh, common European Union, then if that was acceptable, this is so much more important to the social and the religious and the belief structure, the material that makes the nation, much more so than commercial practices as to whether uh, wine can be shipped in or whether cheese coming from Holland has to have a levy or so on. So ask yourself why. Why isn't this front page news? Why are people like Justin Welby and um, Rose Hudson Wilkin or whatever her name is, why aren't they marching down the streets in protest to the potential, even though maybe let's say this is just... Um, um, someone crying wolf and it's a distraction tactic for me and maybe for you. Why aren't they protesting? Why aren't they saying this is amazingly left field? How can it be that the, the government or a member of the House of Lords has been allowed to table a bill that potentially destroys Christ, Jesus and God in a country all at once? I would suggest to you that there is a bigger plan here. There's an agnostic, atheistic tendency to drive the nation and the young and the youth into a moral abyss where it becomes nothing more than a heathen playground allowing another prearranged religious identity, let's say, for example, the Islamization of the country, in preference or, or, or in preparatory stages to a complete Luciferian satanic nightmare where you have a, tyranni a tyrannical government, a tiptoe totalitarian police state running the agenda. That's what they want. A Sodom and Gomorrah desolate country where there is no moral agenda. And don't forget what Chairman Mao said, um, religion is the opium of the people. Look what the Chinese did when they moved into Tibet. They, they basically destroyed uh, Tibetan Buddhism as it, as it was. Look what the state of, of Russia is. In effect, you've got the Russian Orthodox Church, which is just maybe a totem to to some type of allowing religious order, but this is where it's going. They want a communistic one world government with a one world religion. And what that religion will be, I don't know, but I know it doesn't all go well if people are forced under a machete or with a potential threat of being beheaded to bow to the Islamish, Islam, Islam, the Mohammedan doctrine of, of Islam being forced upon people through Sharia law. And I think it's a very difficult um, uh, topic for most people to identify with. But if you will not get off your backside to stop it now, S-I-N, sin, then what will you get off your backsides for? So I'm starting this with the, uh, the idea of the petition. I want to see if this has got legs and if it will run. And if it hasn't, then I see that there's very little hope left for the country, for the world, therefore, by extension. And what I base that on is this, this apathy or this psychosis that is prevalent on everyone now, where they seem to have given up hope. They just are uh, thinking, well, we can't do anything. And what that does is it allows the government to introduce this mayhem in via a preordained agenda. And what I would say to most of you is whether you believe in God, whether you believe in Jesus or Christ, you've got to remember that. In times of trouble, in times of great persecution and need, 
Even people who worship the devil, who have become Satanists, have become Luciferian, people like P. Diddy, and lots of the people involved in the, the Hollywood circuit, and in the media, and in films, and in the music industry. Yeah, When it gets very difficult, the first thing they do is they abandon that ship, and they turn towards a godlike or worshipful Jesus, help me please. Now, just because you're not going through it now doesn't mean you won't go through it in future. And what it does mean, though, for you is if this bill becomes an act virtually overnight, you will not have anywhere to baptize your children. You will not have anywhere to go to get married other than in a registry office. You will have nowhere else to go for, um, uh, should we say, ecclesiastical or soul-helping uh, consultation. You will have probably to be buried in a box at the side of the road or cremated, which not everybody wants. Um, so who will provide this? All of these churches will be closed. There will be no spiritual direction and it will have the equivalent of 16,000 energetic lights being switched off. So that's my final word on it. As a totem, no matter what you think of religion and the Church of England or the Catholic Church or Buddhism uh, and Jehovah's Witnesses, it doesn't matter. This is the tyranny of the state stripping everything from you that is a societal norm. Because once this goes, the gates are open for anything else. So let's try and stop them now. Please like it, subscribe it. This one, if it doesn't hit astronomical numbers, then what can we say? Uh, but people just don't seem to, to want to help to save themselves. And if you don't want to help to save yourself, then what can others do for you? Thank you.